I was concerned about, you know, whether we we need to, you know, they obviously rent seats somewhere or parking spaces somewhere, but I don't know anybody that's ever identified them or used them. So I don't even know if it's necessary to keep them in the, in the uh, agreement. So it's just my two cents. I'll go back on mute and, <laughs> get, and knock it all out. <clears throat> All right, folks, it is. All right. Are we back? I'm Mr. Back. Martin, would you like to tell us about the process for a Zoom meeting before we sure. get Sure. I'm going to look for, look for Jeannie. She's not here yet, but I'm sure she's listening. Um, yeah, so this is the June 3rd planning board meeting um, in town of Camden. Um, since the pandemic, uh, we've been operating under the Zoom platform um, and holding these meetings um, every first and third Thursday of the month. Uh, we encourage everyone to uh, people, the public, to send comments to our office, to me, um, and I'll um, share them with the board. We also monitor the YouTube channel for comments, um, and anyone that wants to be on this can be on this. So um, hold on. There we are. Sorry. I'm trying to some stuff here um and so tonight uh matt we're um just having a, a a meeting to um and we will take an hopefully you guys take an action and that would be to um move some of these these ordinance amendments to a public hearing hopefully on june 17th and with that matt i can hand it over to you to start the meeting you do need to um oh so andy and pat will be um voting members today we do have a quorum um We'll go from there and back to me and I can go, I can explain what the proposed changes are and why. Sure, let's uh, just open with um, just the, again, I'll just follow up, Jeremy, that uh, this evening, I welcome Pat and Andy, you will be voting members this evening. So um, there's no need for a motion for that. It is just being recognized for the minutes. So I think you're fine just recognizing them. Absolutely, you are recognized. And we'll move on to um, item number two, public comments for non-agenda items. Mr. Martin, do we have anything in YouTube, anybody? No, and I, you know, I, I don't, I don't have any at all, so. And anything from the four members that are here? Seeing none, I see head shaking. Um, we will move on to the proposed zoning ordinance amendments, uh, review and approval of language for a hearing. Uh, as Jeremy mentioned, really our goal this evening is to uh, review the language um, of part two, section four, off street parking and loading standards. And then based on our review of that language and the revisions that we have been uh, presented in document revised this afternoon on 6-3, um, we will make a motion, Chris O, hint, hint. <laughs> <laughs> we will make a motion uh, to move this forward for a public hearing, we hope on June 17th. So with that, Jeremy Martin would love to walk through um, the latest version of this as a number of them have um, come to our attention. And maybe he's frozen with excitement over that, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris L, that is. Mark, do you think he was stunned by the eloquence of that introduction? <laughs> I think that might have been it. Uh, yeah. But it, then again, uh, pursuant to what Matt, you and I are doing with the the uh, right. Midcoast Internet <laughs> yeah. Coalition. Oh, now, he, now he's even left. He, yeah. he, of course, is one of the few of us that actually has fiber to his house. So that's a that's a bad sign. That is not. Yeah, we're just we're going to put that one under the table and we're going to start back. again. We're going to backpedal everyone very quietly because we're being recorded. Jeremy, I gave you a wonderful it was like Mark's introduction to me the other night. So I'm going to try it one more time. Uh, Jeremy, so uh, again, uh, we have received the latest final draft. I don't know if you heard that, revised 6-3. And yes. uh, I, I would suggest, again, um, again for review and approval that we work. We all work from that document. And Jeremy, will you share your screen so we can uh, work I with will. It? That would be super. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, everything's frozen. <clears throat> We'll just pretend Marky has DSL up there.
While we're waiting, I have a question. Yeah. Yes, Andy. So um, what is the process then for uh, approving this? Does that happen at the public hearing on the 17th then? And is that a planning board vote? Okay, maybe I can touch on this, um, Matt, before I share my screen. That would be great. The process makes good sense. So what happens, um, Andy, we have to, planning board to do a zoning ordinance amendment has to hold a public hearing. Right. And there has to be two um, public notices, um, one 12 days, 15 days ahead of time, and one seven days ahead of time. Oh, and I'm going to meet admit Anita here. Um, and so what will happen is um, after, if you guys do vote to um, schedule a public hearing for June 17th, tomorrow, Jeannie, Jeannie and I will come up with the, the language that needs to go in the ad. Um, and there will be an ad posted in the Kennebec Journal, honestly, tomorrow on Saturday. Um, and that's the reason that that is, it goes there is because um, of the, and it is, we can never get to the timing for the Camden Herald, to be honest with you, um, just the way their timing requirements are. However, um, on the, the seven, you know, the seven day notice, which is the second notice that's required, that one goes in the Camden Herald and that will be sent in and that will happen. That will appear seven days before the meeting on the 17th. So there is local notice. It just doesn't meet our, the, the Camden Herald one isn't the formal first notice um, mm -hmm. notice. And then you schedule and then you have the public hearing and then you guys vote. Um, you open the public hearing, you vote on, on the proposed amendments, um, whether or not you're in favor or you're not. Um, and then from there, um, I would send a memo to the select board that the planning board held a public hearing on proposed zoning ordinance amendments. They voted yay or nay, you know, five to five to zero or three to two or two to three. Um, or one to four. Um, it's possible that the planning board would could not recommend something, but the select board can still then move it forward. They would then schedule a public hearing on the proposed amendments. And then at that point, um, they would schedule, um, a, they would put it on, a, it would have to go to town meeting for a vote, right? So they could do that either, generally they do them in November or June is when we have our town meetings um, and town vote. Okay. Um, that said, we can, and the select board does from time to time, and remember the energy um, improvements um, that had to get approved by voters this past winter, and that was at the Snowball. Um, that was a special town meeting. Um, so mm -hmm. our special town meetings that the town does schedule from time to time, they should be really kind of emergency kind of things, but from time to time, the select board can make that decision. So I don't know where they're going to go with this. I do know that they do believe that it's an important issue, um, these proposed amendments. I did mention them to them at the select board meeting last uh, on Tuesday. Um, you know, our downtown is for the most part full. All the storefronts um, we're, 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 you know, we're at capacity right now, um, which is great. Um, so there's no one that is currently, um, you know, not able to get into a location because of our parking requirements. However, there are businesses like, suit for instance um that would like to have some more seating inside they can't because they don't meet the parking requirements and they'd have to go find some lease some spaces um it is we've talked about and this is not about zoots this is about parking in general in downtowns and villages across you know here across the country this is an issue um and communities all over the place are removing the off-street parking requirements we've talked about it at great length it's kind of a you know, auto-centric um, planning theory that came about in the 50s and 60s and it just has never changed. Um, and so um, this is this is that, you know, what we're, we're trying to do right now. Um, it does, I don't think, I don't think there will be many impacts at all. Um, we're actually in the process of looking at doing a parking management study um, in, in, in similar to what Bar Harbor has done. Um, so I, I think we're in a good place and uh, I'm at letting Caitlin in um, moving forward. And that's that's the process. Uh, that's the great thing about town government is it goes from you guys to the select board. And you Both of you hold hearings, both group entities hold hearings. And then the ultimate hearing is in front of the voters um, at the ballot box. Um, so right, that, yeah, that's very helpful, Jeremy. I, uh, 
Perfect. Um, I want to yep. make sure there's plenty of opportunity for people to weigh in and uh, that we go yep. over. So thank you. Sure. Thank you. Um, anyone else on process or no? You good? Um, yeah. Okay, Pat, yeah, go Jeremy. Um, <laughs> thanks. I wasn't here at the last meeting, and it was great to look at the um, you know recording of the meeting you guys had the last time. Um, one of the questions, and this is probably a repeat of what we discussed before, but I just wanted to make sure I understood it all. The parking would be required to move over to um, the parking lots that we have in town. Uh, if Well, that's one okay. of the areas. And which, so we've got the parking lots, um, we've got the harbor lot, we've got the lots by 40 paper, there's the lot up kind of near where the Druthy Bear used to be. I'm thinking that one is still around. And what other lots are there for public parking? Um, <clears throat> so public parking, we have the lots by the public safety building. There's parking over at the, by the public library, by the Camden library. Um, I know that's for library purposes, but I think everyone knows how parking works in Camden. Um, there is the um, Knowlton Street lot, um, and there's there's the two Knowlton Street lots really, um, you know they're 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 joined, but um, there's about 119 spaces or 129 spaces in there that the town recently um, purchased. Um, we have a ton of on street parking. Um, you know I I think people forget, and when they talk about public parking lots, I think they oftentimes forget the biggest parking lots of them all, which are the on street parking. Um, where we do allow people to park on the street. Um, and so no one is forcing anyone. I will say I, one of your comments, and I, I mean, I, maybe this is just how I, I took it. Um, I think your first comment about people would then be parking there. I don't, to be honest, I think we'll find that no parking will, the parking won't change um, because this right. doesn't, yeah. doesn't make anyone stop having parking lots or, or make parking lots go away. That said, I, I think we could probably use some infill um, in Camden, to be honest with you, um, some, some additional buildings in some locations. Um, but certainly we're looking at a part, we're looking at a parking strategy and management system to um, address parking. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's, that's good. And I misspoke if I, yeah, I didn't word that correctly in the beginning. Yeah. Um, and one of the other things I think that Anita had mentioned also at the end of her email, and I was wondering, um, is it sounds like there's certainly enough parking spaces for all of the businesses that we have. And, but is there, okay, so we've got that. Um, when she was asking about how do we reconcile this or keep track, I guess, of leased spaces, one of the things I was reading in the amendment is that um, they're the owner of any parking lot, let's say, is required to fill out an inventory essentially of who's where, send that out to the leasees of the lot, and then they're supposed to bring that back to the code enforcement officer. Is that what happens? Um. So I, you know, I, I've been through with the town for three years now, three plus years, three and a half years now. I have not seen one of those ever come in. Um, so I think this is, this is a, it's a great question um, because there's a lot of things that get put into zoning ordinances um, that may make sense. People may think makes sense right when they initially are doing it, but in the end, um, a lot of these things don't make sense. I was talking to someone the other day about the sign ordinance yesterday, actually, Sim it's a similar issue. Um, and we just don't, frankly, have enough time. And though that said, Rosie and I are in the process, the code officer, every time we go through into our zoning ordinance, we have, we're taking notes and we're writing in the margins on where things don't make sense or what processes are required by ordinance, but isn't practical or is not being used. I mean, we should really, some of these things need to be kind of, um, you know, um, yeah. changed. Um, and, and so, yeah, I have not seen that. I do know that when we track Vichler's licenses and so that would be food service. 
um, and lodging licenses um, when they go to the select board for approval annually. There's, a, there's documentation that has to be completed by the applicant um, that details, asks questions about parking is one of the questions that they talk about. And you have to provide um, you know, what is required under the ordinance um, in that section. And so what I end up doing is I review the application that comes in and then I go and look at the old applications that have come in and to make sure that they're all kind of staying in line with how they're keeping maintaining their parking requirements. Um, so that's how it's done currently. It's kind of done annually um, during the process that the select board approves their licenses. The select board never talks about those things, but these are like why we do like the fire chief does and his staff do life safety inspections, code officer does inspections, and we review things like this for zoning during that licensing process, it all kind of happens in the background. If there was an issue, it would be addressed prior to coming to the select board for approval, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. so how, that's how right now we're tracking them. For tracking retail businesses and things like that, that's, there's, we don't do that. Um, I'm, just, I'm just being honest. Um, I don't think there's a community that I'm aware of anywhere that does that. Um, so I think the annual, annual licensing is really the best place to catch that. And I don't think it should be in a zoning ordinance, to be honest with you, those kind of asking pub parking, private parking companies to send inventories on who they're leasing spaces to. I think it should really be about license, annual licensing um, as, you know, compliance with zoning requirements. So um, we're going to try to tweak the ordinance over time to fix some of these things. It's not easy though. Yeah, um, you had mentioned sending out a Camden parking study. Is that something that does exist? Um, there's some old camp, um, parking study. I can send that around. I haven't sent that around. Um, it's it's quite old. Um, it? Oh, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't. I know that right now we are we did hire a firm to do a parking management study, and that is going to assess all of the parking that we have, how best to manage it, how to best make sure people aren't taking advantage of two hour parking, parking lots by parking there all day um, while they're working downtown. Um, and so that's really one of the things that I think is going to um, be successful while we do the parking management is we're going to find that there's actually going to be, and they found it in Bar Harbor and Mystic Connecticut and a lot of places that do this. Um, you find that the over the turnover in the parking spaces is actually real. Um, and you're not getting what we have here in Camden, which is people tend to find a parking spot, even though it may be a two hour spot and they stay there for eight hours while they're working, to be honest. Yeah. Um, that's what we don't want. I mean, we want to be able to provide those people with parking, right? Um, it just needs to be um, in a, not in front of their business um, or where they're working sure. to be in a, an appropriate location. I will the, say, um, only other even the, the, the town staff is actually now we moved from a parking lot that is becoming a, par a public parking lot and going to be a limited hour, hour or two limit parking lot. But we have left that to open up parking. And now we're parking up in, in the Knowlton Street lots um, where there's plenty of spaces. And all summer long, there's plenty of spaces um, in those mm. public lots. So when, you know, you talk about the use downtown, you know, do we do we. Can we afford to lose parking or do we have enough parking available? You know, there's plenty of parking at those, those lots all summer long. And that's the, that's the, you know, our crunch time for parking is the summertime. Um, I think everyone knows the rest of the year you can find parking relatively easily downtown. Jeremy, in um, conjunction uh, with this, as we start to change, and this is probably going to, go through both the planning board and the select board. Um, is there also any um, concurrent uh, policy change in terms of parking enforcement? Do you have anything that's being discussed with that? I think, I think uh, as I recall, the, there was a memo that went out that um, said the police department was gonna um, get back to um, parking enforcement. I think that was released publicly, I believe. I think everyone knew during COVID and during the winter, we kind of stopped doing that. Um, okay. <clears throat> that's so that's been, okay, so that's been out there. 
Yeah. Okay. Pretty certain that. I thought I saw the memo. Um, Chris, so any further questions before we start to dissect uh, this particular um, change to part two, section four of off street parking? Nothing from me. Um, I think it looks. I think it looks great. It, I think it sort of follows pretty well from what we talked about at the last meeting of what we all felt was a good direction to head. So, can you see my screen? Yes. Yep. All right. So I'll just kind of go through. And this is the um, draft. This is the the one that I sent you at the um, like at four thirty. Which, and again, I, I'm sorry for the late email with this, but this, for the most part, it's exactly the same as you've looked at before. Um, so we would need to mend, what we're amending would be the stuff in blue. Um, and this is just kind of verbiage that needs to be in there, this section. And here's the dwelling units. Um, we're accepting those. Um, for those in the B1 and BTH, where, which are exempt from off-street parking, same for accessory apartments. And Jeremy, like um, as I read through this, I would recommend just going because we, as I said, okay, we should just yes. do it line by line. If I, I'll just ask the the board, um, Pat, I propose that we just because there've been so many versions going through that we just go through it. It'll it, it'll take us an extra ten minutes, perhaps. Uh, uh -huh. in our best interest, just uh, Chris, are you okay if we just walk through this? Yeah. Okay. So Jeremy, uh, you know, as we talked on the phone, I think that's probably going to be the easiest. Okay. Thank sure. you. Sir. Yep. So this is up here. We, we quickly change that's changed. That's you didn't see that before, but that really doesn't, that's a technical thing. Like I said, um, and the other change, um, so we're going to, the strikeouts are going to be in red, obviously what's going away. Um, this is a change that reached out about the rooming houses. And I agreed. I think we just looked over, glossed over it a little bit. Um, um, so what's going to happen here, we need to do is we're going to separate inns and rooming houses and kind of create a, a new III. Um, and we're going to say rooming houses, um, except for again, in the B1 and BTH, which are exempt from off street park requirements will have be required to have what they're required currently. Does that make sense? See that change. Um, and then the restaurant bars reads exactly the same except and um and chris o found it and i found it earlier too um we did i changed this it was up here um with less than 150 seats and then i had with more than 150 so if you came into the office with 150 um, you probably wouldn't need any parking um potentially um so now this says with 150 or more seats does that make sense chris o yeah, no, it's in the first part, it should be fewer, not less. Fewer. Oh, yeah, good job. Thank that you. That's what I was pointing to. Ah. Why does that matter? Grammar is important. Okay. I, I guess I. Um, Can you explain the grammar thing for Andy and I, myself? Fewer, you use fewer when you are referring to a specific Thanks. quantity. Oh, okay. So because it's fewer than 150 seats, less than when it's a uh, entity of time or. Well, I learned something new today. There you go. I know, I do too. <laughs> so before Thanks, we go on, um, Jeremy, so this was um, based on Mark. We should probably just spend a moment on uh, section yes. four, yeah. restaurant, bars. Good point. Restaurant, bars, and lounges, except for those in the B1 and BTH with fewer, Chris, than 150 seats, which are exempt from off-street parking requirements. And um, I don't know, do you want me to bring up comments Mark had or, or um, you want to, Matt? I mean, um, you know, Mark, Mark brought this up and I think rightfully so, this idea about larger restaurants last meeting. And so I took a stab at it and my stab was the 150 seats. Um, he had a, made a suggestion in an email about 60 or 70, I think is what he said. Um, a 60 seat restaurant is honestly pretty small. Um, and I, I, I just, um, you know, that 
are two restaurants that um, this would apply to in Camden. We have two restaurants that are 150 or more seats, it's the Waterfront and Peter Rocks. Um, so, and what I did in that, um, I also reduced the requirements for the restaurants that have 150 or more seats. I reduced their requirements from this, what's currently required um, of one space for every four seats and one space for every eight um, linear feet of bench space, I just um, cut their requirement in half. Um, and I, um, I think I felt that was appropriate. I reviewed other ordinances around um, in downtowns and restaurants, um, trying to get something that seemed to make sense. And that made sense. It also makes sense with the intent of trying to lessen the off street parking requirement in a downtown core um, business district. Right. Um, and Jeremy, I would, you know, in respect to Mark, I would open that up to the floor uh, for comment, for thoughts from Andy, Crystal, and uh, Pat. Um, you've seen the changes, um, the compromises that uh, Jeremy's put forth. And again, um, as Mark has made uh, a written statement about this, I think it would be um, in the best interest of all of us to hear if there is comment from the floor. So Andy, anything on, again, uh, the fewer than 150 seats and then Jeremy's modification for those two restaurants, Peter Otts and the Waterfront, uh, one space for every eight seats and one uh, space for every 16 uh, linear feet of bench space. No, only, the only comment I have is that, you know, I'm struggling to wrap my head around what the consequences of these changes might be. You know, it's... Um, it's difficult to, uh, you know, um, I think really forecast what's going to happen downtown after these changes. So I, I think the, the stakeholders that are interested in those numbers of seats, um, if they have comments, will show up at the public hearings, I hope, and um, we'll hear from them. And Pat as well. Um, I was thinking something similar to Andy, um, uh, because if we have all of these parking lots and all of these spaces within town with, with plenty of parking, and Mark is saying, well, between 60 and 75 seats, they should be required to secure a certain amount of off-street parking. What's, what are the consequences? I mean, if there's so much available parking, right now. And, you know, there's only so much room to bring in so many more restaurants, I would think, of those sizes. What would really be the fallout between 60 to 75 versus 150? Yeah. Um, I can opine on some of this. Um, I mean, I will say the peak use for restaurants like Peter Ott's and Waterfront is, is dinner time. Um, that if you look in the ITE traffic engineers, um, you know, um, traffic manual, you'll see that those are the peak times for restaurants like that. Um, that's also the time when a lot of the businesses are, um, you know, no longer open and people are no longer downtown working. Um, so you have out migration of people that are working and you have in migration of people that are coming in. Um, to visit the restaurants and the shops that are open or walk along the waterfront. Um, so I, I tend to think there's not gonna be much change and we won't see much impact because at the same time, um, restaurants and businesses, like, this doesn't mean people aren't gonna have parking anymore, right? People still need parking and they, they need to provide that for customers um, oftentimes, or they feel like they need to. Um, and they need their employees to park somewhere. So that's parking still going to be there um, and people are still going to be parking. We're just not going to mandate that they have X number of parking spaces. Um, I mean, that's kind of what happens in downtown cores and villages um, is that it's a shared resource. The parking is a shared resource, to be honest. Um, and, um, you know, you don't generally come to Camden for one thing you're coming to downtown Camden and you're gonna go on a, you know, on a, on a schooner or a day sale and you're gonna walk and you're gonna shop and you're gonna hike and 
you know, um, you know, Camden Hills, or you're going to do this and that. you're going to do all those things in the day in downtown Camden. And, um, you know, it's why should each, and we've talked about it, each one of those businesses be required to provide their own parking when all those people are, you know, sharing, um, sharing the businesses that they're visiting, sharing the restaurants, sharing the, um, the diners, um, if you will. So I don't think there's going to be much change, to be honest with you, Pat. That is my, um, I haven't seen any significant change. If you look at Belfast, they've exempted downtown parking requirements. Bath has done it. Brunswick's done it. Um, Bangor's done it. Um, you know, it all seems to work out, um, to, be, to be honest with you. And I think that's what the market does. Um, those are my, that's my, my thoughts on that. Um, okay. If I, Chris, yeah, just sort of. I, I mean, we talked a little bit about this last meeting as well. Um, but if you look at the the restaurants that are 150 or more, are physically larger restaurants that are close to an existing large parking lot, and the ones that are under that size don't have actual off street parking currently. So if they're we're requiring them to pay for or lease a parking space that's somewhere, but it's not guaranteed that it's actually being used by the patrons of that restaurant because it's not the most convenient parking spot. Mm -hmm. So there are several restaurants in town that most people are going to park on the street as close to the restaurant. And it's really not relevant to wherever they've leased a parking spot. And as Jeremy says, it's in the evening, which is a totally different perspective. Um, so it doesn't really change what parking is available or is not available. It's just removing a burden from smaller businesses in town. Good point, Chris. Yeah. Pat, further comments, thoughts? No, but uh, that was helpful, uh, Chris. And I think on that note, then I guess I would be fine with the language the way it currently is that Jeremy's written up. And, and, and especially where Chris uh, mentioned that these smaller restaurants, that if they could have like 60 to 75 seats, where they aren't typically near any existing lots already, um, you know, that does put up uh, for question on would their lot, would their parking spaces really get used by their patrons? I think that certainly oh. stands out in my mind. Very, very and to, true. And to your point, um, Pat, if we had a history of inventories and we had documentation from a database where we could document one way or the other, it would be helpful um, based on your earlier question why that doesn't exist. Um, you know, it's, it definitely would be hard to be able to come to a conclusion one way or the other, um, whether those particular spaces are being fully utilized. Um, and my guess, Chris, so to your point and to what we discussed last time, absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> I've lived here for 30 years. We go to restaurants. I, I have never gone to a restaurant in town and gone to their designated parking space. Yeah, except I, the waterfront. <laughs> That's true. Right. Yeah. Have, have, there you go. Or they have a lot. And I don't think I've eaten. Right a, I don't think I've eaten at Peter Rod's. You know, in many, many moons. So, um, but I'd like to uh, recognize Anita, um, who has her hand up. Anita, are you with us? Yes. Can you hear me? Absolutely. You sound terrific. Okay. Anita. Good evening. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad I could uh, at least tune in this way. Um, I wanted to ask Jeremy whether um, he he mentions Zoot and. Uh, uh, I'll use that as an example as well. A restaurant that is um, wrestling with these requirements that are presently in place and that will most likely soon be changed. Uh, will, will those businesses that have to um, fulfill the present requirements be advised that these requirements may change and that they may want to um, say temporarily lease um, the parking spots that they're presently required to have, but may not be required to have in six months or something like that. No, that's a good point, Anita. Um, I have talked to uh, at least three um, restaurant 
owners in town. Um, and I will tell you that two of them said they were um, excited about this and that they would, um, if, if they needed their voice heard, they would be happy to attend the public hearing and share their opinion on this. Um, so I think, um, I think they'll get, we'll get enough publicity out of this, to be honest with you. I think this is a big change um, and a, for a positive change to be honest, you know, I, I firmly believe that, that I'm, sh I'm certain that, um, you know, that, the restaurant restaurant owners will find out about it um, on their own. I can certainly send, reach out to them, every business in town, um, you know, the restaurants that, at least the ones that I know that are, are, have inquired about expanding, adding seats. Um, I can certainly let them know and let the, those others know that, hey, you're not going to have this requirement anymore. Um, so plan for it um, moving forward. Um, I don't know when this is going to happen, right? Um, I don't know what the select board's going to do. I'm, I'm, sounds like the select board currently, but we're having a new select board come in next next week. Um, but the current select board was all in favor of these changes. And, and I don't know if they were looking at a special town meeting, if we do one of those at some point this summer, um, or if they're just looking at putting it to voters in November. But um, kind of the process is to try to get these things lined up so that the select board can do um, and process them as they you know, see the need um, rather than waiting until the last minute to try to get something to the November. Um, as you guys recall, getting things to the, this June ballot, we were working on that stuff in January and February. So it does take a lot of time to get there. So now's the time to do these um, and they'll just line up and let the select board figure that out. Does that make sense? Anita? Anita, you're good back there? I'll, I had to unmute. <laughs> I, yes, I'll certainly thanks. reach out to them, Anita. Thank I mean, you, Jerry. Got all I, their, we got all their for, contact info. Yeah, so. I, for one, would really like you to reach out, especially to those who are planning spaces or moving into a new space like Zeus's sure. uh, yeah. and that sort of situation where it really makes a difference to them yeah. to know where this will end up. Yep. No, it does. And, you know, Oyster River, new business, Oyster River wine, wine growers, um, same thing. They they had concerns about this. We were able to figure out some parking for them though. Um, so, but same, and, and it same goes for Wolf Peak, uh, the other new business that took over Juthy Bear. Um, you know, they had to find some parking as well. Um, so we'll let all of them know. Anita, Thank you. You bet. Thank you, Thank you Anita. Um, Without further comment or discussion, um, everyone- It's okay um, with that? Yeah, you, know, you guys are right if we move forward from section four. I mean, keep in mind, next week is the public hearing. So, and I, I, I I'm right. kind of bummed Mark's not here to express his opinion, but this is not, the public hearing is next week. And, and you know, we can, um, you know, we'll have that discussion. There'll be a discussion again next week. Um, and then if someone's not in favor of it, then they're not in favor of it. And that's, that's what happens. And that's, you know, that's why you guys vote on things. Um, and it's good to have a diverse group and, diverse opinion set. So I'll move on to the next one. Does that make sense? Yep. Should we move forward on to um, section five schools? I mean, I, what I would love, uh, Jeremy, maybe you can just uh, talk us through again, section five is school, uh, except for those in B1, which are exempt from Austin street parking. Right. Yeah. Just to keep everybody here. Number six, which is medical care facilities, excluding medical offices. And, and then number seven, uh, place of assembly. public assembly. Yep. Yep. And theater halls um, exempted and same for churches. Um, campgrounds are not allowed in the downtown so or in the BTH, so I didn't bother um, adding them there. Um, and this is some other language that we were looking at. Jeannie had come up with for this is elsewhere, further in the deeper in the ordinance. I don't want to change this. I'm going to leave it as is. Um, there's this, re this section that talks about um, if you change use of a building and the required number of states is how you calculate the number of spaces that are required. Um, I think she was looking at this from, since we're exempting all these uses from the B1, um, then we should just try to remove it from this section. That said, you never know what happens and someone could come in with another hotel or a, that requires parking or a large restaurant or, um, 
um, a congregate housing facility, if you will, that could come in downtown that's allowed use. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I, I want to keep that in. Um, and so that's, those are the changes. So Jeremy, can we back up to that for one second? Just point yes. of clarification. So you're referring to option two and option three and the red strikeouts are not red strikeouts? No. no. So I'm saying go with option one, which says leave language as is. Okay. Which if you look, it's it's referring to, it took me a minute to figure out. If you look up there, yeah, number four, that's the language as is. Exactly. Yeah. And then two and three were proposed changes. Yeah. With the and Jeremy is saying, let's not change it, let's leave it as it is in number four. Yeah. So exactly. Makes so is, sense. I have a question then. So is the idea then that uh, to just get rid of that altogether before it goes to the public hearing. Um, so here's the thing about these public hearings. We have to have the language done, right? Um, uh, so it's the idea is, and it's not the same actually, Chriso, going back. Um, the language, it's... Slightly, yeah. Number four is currently in the ordinance. Number five currently in the ordinance would be option two with the red strikeouts included, right? The red strikeouts actually, if, I, if you make that all black font, that's what option, that's what five says. I want to keep it as is. I don't even want to touch it. So from my perspective, we don't even need to look at it. Um, again, this says it, it's a way to calculate parking spaces on a new use. If, and then you kind of in the B1, you can look at the original use of the building um, you know, if it was lawfully in existence at the time, I want to keep that language in. I don't think it warrants discussion because we have current uses that still require, will still require parking off street parking. And I don't want to change what we currently have in place for that. Um, if that makes sense. Is that everyone good with that? Yes. No. <clears throat> please <laughs> oh jeremy just one question um yeah. there was one point that anita had made she i in her email she said it was number three yeah and she had added a piece where if you have serial spaces meaning like and i really don't know what exists like that in camden or if it's applicable to our town but it said spaces, serial in nature. So let's say it's one thing on Sunday and something else on the other days of the week. And I think she had noted that you would want to take the higher of the two. And I thought that made sense to add if that's a scenario that exists in our town. Um, what I don't want to do is... Um, oh, it was number three right there on C. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we were not trying to open this up to a big dive in of all of the parking um, requirements in town, that we were keeping this focus on the BTH and the B1. Um, and I agree that there are some changes that we could um, and maybe should look at elsewhere, um, but I, I wanna look at them kind of bigger picture. And this one, yeah. um, it allows, it gives the planning, this whole process gives the planning board, um, you know, a way to get there. Um, I have never run into this as an issue right now. Uh, we can, um, you know, I, I guess I'm trying to think of a use that she's thinking of um, that would work, that, that this would apply to. Um, you know, I mean, it's interesting in, in Bangor, the old Bangor mall, right? It was a mall and then and then they rented out portion of it to a big, you know, evangelical church with a lot of seating, right? Um, that a lot of people. Um, I guess that's the type of scenario where you have one use that's used on certain days and then another use used on certain other days. Mm -hmm. I can't see a, a one of those in Camden currently. Um, could I envision it? Sure. But I don't want to go down the road of, again, trying to look at all of the different, um, you know, parking requirements, um, because I think there are other things, the Board of Appeals, I don't think should be, able, there's other, other sections of this parking ordinance that I don't think work. 
but we're trying to keep this focused on the B1 and the B2 right now. Um, and Jennifer, can I ask you a question? Yep. And Anita as well. So yes, please. Me? Yes. yes. Okay. I missed the part for item five, Jeremy, down the down the page. Yeah, the we're gonna leave. We're gonna leave the language as right. is. Right, but it's not number four. That's not. No, the I know. Thing. Yeah, that was that my was mistake. cleared up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This was suggested by Anita. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's part of her email. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Perfect. All right, thanks. So, yeah. Jeremy, um, let's go. Anita, do you want to uh, come back in? Yeah, sure. Um, so, your example of the church is is kind of an example I thought of. Um, not that I know of anything like that, but um, basically, I was looking at this addition add. Um, the the way it's phrased now is you're adding both uses together. And I'm wondering whether um, the thought in that phrase, existing phraseology relates to say a building that has a use on the second, first floor and a different use on the second floor and a different use on the third floor. Yes. Um, okay. That so, is correct. So I, you know, and I was thinking of something that, um, well, uh, the church is a great example. And just because we don't have that use. Understood. Um, yeah. Uh, I just thought that adding in that um, clarity about you're expecting it to be different, different floors with different offices. And I'm thinking one uh, space with different uses at different times. Mm -hmm. And that could yeah, happen I, downtown easily. It could, it could. Um, I think to be honest, Anita, I think that needs a, I think I'd like to do a lot more thinking and a lot or dive in, I'd talk to a traffic engineer that I know um, that I've worked with in the past and, and see, um, you know, what the ITE standard says for some of those um, parking requirements are for some of those types of uses. Um, and if there is one, um, he's one of the better traffic engineers in the state. And I think he'd, he'd very much like to comment on it. And I, I didn't really trust what he would, would share with us. Um, but for purposes trying to get this package to the select board. I don't, I'd prefer if we can kind of wait on that one and, um, um, you know, get to it at another time. I mean, I, I will say that the code officer and myself can be very crafty when we review, um, you know, building plans and change of use um, requirements. So um, I'm not really concerned about it right now, Anita. Um, okay. That makes sense. I mean, we do have requirements for assembly use, right? And um, yeah, I just, I think we should just try to, um, any space I can think of, Anita, would be really something that falls in the assembly use scenario. Right. Because right. you also have to think about, um, on top of all of the zoning requirements, you also have to think about, and it's stuff you guys don't have to think about, but life safety requirements and building code requirements, sure. and right. capacity a lot of that stuff is driven by, um, you know, so I think some of the uses that may, that you're envisioning that could do something like this would be end up in an assembly type. So uh, I was addressing myself to that only because I was given, um, you sent along the verbiage for the entire section we're looking at, and that was part of the verbiage, and so I was looking at it. <laughs> okay, I'll know better. If, if, if we're if we're trying to improve things, um, I wasn't going to draw a line about where the improvement. I, should I be appreciate made. that, Anita, and I'll, I will definitely will definitely, like I said earlier, I've got in my zoning ordinance um, notes uh, in the margin on things that need, um, and I'll highlight this one. I'll start this one too. Okay. Okay. In the future, you can say just ignore this section entirely, and then I'll ignore I know. it. I forgot you're on the board, Anita. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, we digress. <clears throat> that was not a criticism, Anita, at all. Yeah, yeah welcome, right. <laughs> welcome back, everyone. Um, so, Anita, thank you. Um, and Jeremy, just again, um, moving away from options one, two, and three at the end there, um, which I think we have discussed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is there further discussion? on the earlier sections as they are proposed by Mr. Martin. Andy, anything from you? 
Nothing more. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Uh, Pat, anything coming from your side? Uh, nothing. Uh, uh, comments? No, I think it, it's good. The only one thing I was thinking of, um, and this may well exist to a certain degree. I probably don't notice it on a day-to-day -day basis myself, but to have good signage up for where parking lots are available is always a big help, especially to the tourists. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that's something to be um, overlooked I mean, in the same way that I was asking about um, changes in enforcement as well. So um, Jeremy, Mike, I don't know, again, it's not cogent to this particular discussion. But it's no, I'll that. talk with Dave St. Laurent about it. I mean, we need to sign the new the parking lot that where staff used to park in across from Long Green. Um, that's now going to be a public parking lot. So we're going to have to sign that as well. So um, I'll talk to Dave and Audra about making sure our signage. It's something that we constantly look at, make sure we can do it the right way and get people to where they need to be. But Pat, your comments are, are good in terms of this change being part of an overall ecosystem that is going to have variations and what we can do to facilitate the ease of the change for everyone. Chris, so... Uh, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I hope you're warming up for your motion. I, I, uh, I was going to say, would you like a motion? I know, not quite yet, because Anita has her... Anita, how are you doing back there? One more comment before we... I think Anita may have moved on. All right, barring any further discussion. Going once, going twice, going three times. Jeremy, last comment. Sorry, I'm done. Oh, you're back, um, Anita. Yes, I'm sorry about that. I couldn't unmute very easily. Um, no, I'm good with what you've got at this point. And you Thank see, you. just to double check, Anita, you see your changes as you had sent earlier in terms of uh, dwelling units and the other things that have been made. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, excellent. I hate to be the bearer of good news, but Chris O, <laughs> barring further discussion or comment, I propose uh -huh. that um, we put a motion before this board. I would um, make a motion. Yes, that the proposed but, amendment is, uh, Chris, do you have it written down that we're going to take uh, over? Well, uh, someone, someone gave me a little hint uh, earlier. The, <laughs> I don't know if you're allowed to say that in public that we sent you a cheat sheet, but I, I, just, did that. I just had a hint. A hint. I'm going to make a motion. Uh, okay. That the board agrees to send the proposed amendment to the Camden Zoning Ordinance at Article 10, Part 2, Section 4 A and B, with the language approved tonight to a public hearing to be held via Zoom on Thursday, June 17th, 2021 at 5 p.m. And with that motion, do I hear a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Perfect, we get a vote. And not seeing any further comments, I will put it to um, Roll call vote. Uh, Anita, I believe you are with us. And uh, because you were so helpful throughout this process, I really appreciate it. Anita, um, let's go. Thank you. I'm in favor. And Pat. Yes, I'm in favor. Uh, Andy Smith. In favor. So Chris Rowan. In favor. And Matt Siegel makes uh, five in favor, five zero. I'm in favor. We will move this forward for a hearing on June 17th. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Um, and maybe to wind this down, Matt, I'm going to try to get some other um, housing stuff in the works for us to start looking at too. Um, I'd like to, um, especially um, open space zoning ordinances, really um, need some need some work. Um, and I'd like to try to look at. Um, one of the entities that uh, was proposing is proposing to do something at Sagamore Farm. Um, they are there. They have some zoning um, adjustments or modifications that need to happen. Um, I don't know if the town's going down that road, but I would like to be able to facilitate um, some additional housing up there and not require such um, spread out so much land. I'd like to increase the density in some locations if possible. So look for that in the near future. Absolutely. And Jeremy, as you know, we have discussed that in the past. So that is one that, um, in terms of language that needs to be changed, uh, yeah. that would be excellent language to address in terms of Yeah, <clears throat> for sure. 
Fabulous. And uh, Jeremy, I also see future agenda items, 617 uh, Shoreland application for Ed's Road. Anything? Oh, correct. Up on that? Good point. That's a good one. Uh, Thank thanks for reminding me on that. So this is a unique um, review of the planning board, to be honest, because it's not a site plan application. It does not fall under um, Article 12 in the zoning ordinance. It actually is, there's a, there's a paragraph in the Shoreland zoning section of the ordinance that refers to um, requires a setback of minimum setback of 75 feet from a any stream that is draining to a to, to a in in the shoreland zone that's draining to the protected resource. In this case, this is the ocean, um, which is down off of. Um, um, all right, I just saw a comment from Anita um, off of Beloyne Road, is where Ed's Road is, um, and. There's a new house proposed to go in there and there's a provision that requires them to get the planning board to okay the reduction of the required setback um, for a driveway or a road from that stream. Um, and it's, um, and I think it's 75 feet off of that stream is what they're required to do. And the lay of the land is such that um, then there's some rock um, ledge outcropping the way the driveway needs to go to the lot, which you guys don't review, um, it has to go around this little um, ledge outcropping. And it's, I think, only four feet into that 75 foot setback. And it's just for like uh, the bend of the, the driveway around the outcropping. Um, and that's what it is. That's what, so that's the proposal um, that you'll see next week. And it's an odd one because it's not the site plan application. You don't do the same review. Um, it's a, you guys just make a determine, you have to waive that current requirement and allow it to go lower. Um, there's not much standard there, um, other than, um, managing erosion control, <clears throat> but, thanks, but I'll share, I'll get you something, a summary of that before that meeting. Um, Jeremy, but for something like that, um, like Headstrom, is there any kind of environmental protection issues that we would be dealing with as well? No, I mean, and, I guess the shoreline zoning provision is environmental, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, no, I don't even believe um, they'll need a. I believe they'll need a. Um, I have to see exact. I don't read. I don't have it in front of me, um, and I reviewed it very quickly initially for them. Um, and I think they'll just need a permit by rule um, from DEP for that one, which is soil disturbance within 75 feet of a brook. Something like this could be a permit by rule, which is you submit an application to the state. Um, they have 14 days to review it. Um, if you don't hear back from them, then it's approved. Uh, that's what a permit by rule is. So um, we'll make sure all that stuff's included. And I'll give you a, a good summary of what your responsibility is and how you review that project. That would be much appreciated. Yeah, but it's nowhere near as um, formal and as involved as a site plan application that you guys have done before. So, okay, Excellent. sounds good. Closing comments from the board this evening before we make an another motion, Chris. Uh, uh, no, I was just wondering, I was curious, uh, Jeremy, if you have any sense from the town of whether we'll be heading back to in-person meetings anytime soon. Um, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm going to, if it's been discussed at all or not. What's that? If it's been discussed at all or not. Um, I think there's some discussions happening about it. Um, I think there's, um, I think some really like this format because it provides, um, more opportunity for some people to be involved because they can sit at home and not have to, leave their home to be involved and, and participate um, in the public process. Um, so, um, and it may be a hybrid of both. Yeah, yeah. I think that's where, the, I think <coughs> Chris so right now is kind of a hybrid. Um, I'd like to see the committee meetings kind of stay this way, but um, that's yeah. what I'm right? um, You see, Anita I'm just had thinking of the hearings. Right, right. And maybe the hearings we could do, yeah. Um, Here's a question. Anita has a question about fill us in on Sagamore Farm decision progress. Um, Anita, that's going to be, I'm going to bring that up to the select board, the new select board. We've got two new members coming on. Um, and I don't know if, um, you know, after June 8th. So I think the select new select board is going to have to bring that up 
uh, I think should be one of their priorities right off the bat, just to, you know, we asked for, they asked me to put out a, um, you know, RFI and we've got some responses and um, they've been sitting there and, and we haven't done anything with them. So I think the select board, new select board will have to take some action pretty quick on that one. Um, Fair enough. Yeah. Hey, um, Matt. Yep, Pat, sir. Please. Oh, I just had one question. Is there any more information on when we're revisiting the climate resilience approach yeah, um, with the outside advisor? I think. <laughs> um, I'll let me fill you in on at a nut since this is not on the agenda. Um, I'll fill you in at the next meeting, probably. Is that okay? okay. Yep, that's great. All right. Well, thank you all for attending this evening. Thank you for your discussion on the change. Um, Jeremy, we look forward to that hearing in two weeks. And Chris O, if there's no further discussion. Uh, motion to adjourn. And do we hear a second? Second. And all in favor of adjourning. Thank you all. Aye, thank you. Aye. Thank yeah. you. Aye. That is unanimous.